My question is about uh, your recording, David Bowie's Heroes. Can you please explain uh, and just talk about the experience of recording Heroes with David Bowie? And, you know. Well, the story is on YouTube for anyone who'd like to go up. But I mean, here we are. Uh, I just moved to New York in February 1977, leaving the music business behind forever. <laughs> Gone, never will I return to this seething pit. Um, and then in July, I got a phone call in Waterside Plaza in my modest apartment. Uh, Hi, it's Brian. I'm in Berlin with David. Hang over, I'll pass you over. And David said, well, here we are, and do you think you can play some hairy rock and roll guitar? And I said, well, I'm not sure because I haven't played for two or three years, but if you're prepared to take the risk, so will I. And the next week, a ticket arrived first class, Lufthansa to Frankfurt on to Berlin. So I got on the plane. I believe the first time I ever flew first class, those working players among us know that managers fly in first class <laughs> and the rest of us are at the back. <laughs> and anyway, there I was in first class and the stewardess leant forward while passing me my glass of champagne and she said, first class. It's the only way to fly. And I believed her. Well, you'll, I've told this story many times. Anyway, so then I landed in Frankfurt. And this was the time of Bader Meinhof. So here's a young Harry with a guitar and the pedal board. Well, it wasn't sophisticated, but to a German security guard checking what's going on the board. There were batteries and wires and pedals and things you stepped on called switches. He didn't like the look of that. But anyway, I got on and then instead of being met at Berlin Airport, I wasn't. So I called a taxi into the, head into the hotel, the former SS headquarters in Berlin, and then went on from there into the studio like quarter to six in the evening. And I said, well, would you like to play me something? And Brian said, well, plug in. So I plugged in, switched in. Brian put it into the VCS3. And then, tom, 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 tom. And what you hear at the beginning of Beauty and the Beast is exactly my first response to the first bar of the music I heard, and that's what it is. I did all my parts in three days, and Heroes itself, the actual title track, uh, I can't recall Brian actually being in the studio. But whereas Beauty and the Beast was recorded in the control room, in, for Heroes, I was in the large room playing live with, I believe it was a Marshall stack, and it was a question of getting the feedback. So, <laughs> so I stood, and there were some places where the guitar, my 1959 Les Paul, fed back, and some places it didn't. I was asked the question earlier in this talk, well, how did you know which space got the feedback? Well, I hate to say it, but that really is a dopey question. <laughs> how do I know standing there gives me feedback? Because when I move here, it doesn't. And when I move back again, it does. And in those points, tape was put on the ground. So I knew where to move to get the feedback. And I don't recall a vocal at that point. At that point, I recall playing to the instrumental backing track. So I did three takes in the rough, the same area, which Tony Visconti, stunning producer, just put all three up, as we will see also on YouTube, where he talks through the making of Heverus. There was one other gentleman. Yes, sir.